Okay, so now I wanted to show you guys how I upload kind of unique shapes using uh, an iPad. And so the first thing that you're gonna do, of course, is just make sure that your canvas has been blocked. And then you're gonna lay it on a flat surface. And then the next thing you wanna do is build some sort of station for your iPad to sit on that is kind of out of the way. So I typically use these like sugar fina boxes that I've cleaned out and now use for thread storage. And I like it because it is nice and flat so the iPad sits comfortably. And then you're just gonna stack it up high enough so that way when you put your iPad, the image will be right in the picture. So then the next thing you're going to do is on your iPad, open design space, which will bring you kind of to this page. I'll set that down, which will bring you to this page. And then you're going to press new project. Go over here to this button down here that says upload. Take a photo. Okay. And then what you'll want to do is just set your iPad kind of on that tower that you've made. Um, and you really just want to make sure that the camera gets the image that you are trying to make. And it's really important that the canvas is on a flat surface and that your iPad is sitting on a flat surface because any tilt in the iPad can make your final board come out distorted. And ultimately, we don't want it tilted or anything like that. So once you have the picture captured, you're just going to take the photo whoops and you guys can see I kind of tilted the iPad there so I'm going to redo it holding it um, a little bit more still on my tower this time I'm just gonna take that photo use photo okay so then once you have your picture on your iPad it's going to bring up this screen Okay, so now when you have the screen pulled up, what you're gonna wanna do is erase everything that is in your image. So you're gonna go down here to erase. And this little gauge down here allows you to determine the size. So if I'm way up here, I'm gonna end up with a big eraser. Down here, little eraser. And I'm using an Apple Pencil, but you can use your fingers just as easily. Um, I like the Apple Pencil because it does give me a little bit more precision, but ultimately, you know, if you don't have one, fingers are fine. Or if you're trying to determine whether or not, you know, you think it's worth getting, you can do it without the pencil, but I do like kind of being able to fine tune it. And now you're just going to go in with your Apple Pencil and erase everything that is not your ornament. So... This does take a little bit of time. Um, I will say now is not the time to hurry. You really want to make sure that you get close. And this little box right here will tell you kind of what your final shape looks like. So ultimately right now this shape is not what we want, but that is because we need to clear a lot more of this away. So I usually start with a pretty big brush. Um, eraser until I get kind of closer to my piece and then typically around here I'll switch to a smaller one just so I can be a lot more kind of fine-tuned and what you can also do is you know let's say you're at the step and you're finding it really hard to kind of get those defined edges that you want using two fingers you can expand the image and that will allow you to get really close so basically what I'll do is use my pen and just kind of go right next to the shape of my stitched piece. Um, let's say you make a mistake and you, you know, accidentally erase something that you want to keep. That's perfectly fine. Down here, there's an undo button and that will basically, you know, undo anything that you've done. And then let's say I did that and I thought, oh, you know, that that took too much, so I'm gonna undo it. And then I change my mind and decide, oh wait, I actually did like it. There's a redo button down here as well. So now what I'm going to do is take some time and just kind of clean this up all the way around. 
uh, as you kind of get used to your iPad, it'll get a lot quicker, but I still like to take my time for this portion just because I think that it is worth it to ensure that you get the shape that you want. One thing to keep in mind is you don't have to follow kind of each individual stitch. You're just going to kind of follow the more so general shape. And the reason for that is when you cut the board out using the Cricut, typically your board is going to be slightly smaller than your piece anyway. So you don't have to worry about kind of all the little places where maybe your rows are ending to give you kind of an oval look because your final result, you're going to want more so that oval look versus like the steps from going stitch by stitch. Okay, so I'm going to take some time to clean this up and then for the next step, I will show you how to smooth it out to really get the shape that you want and how to make sure that it's uploaded. So then once you have the shape that you want, and we can see here, it's not a perfect oval, but it's pretty close to, um, you know, kind of what we want, then you'll press next. And now that it's enlarged, you can see that the top and bottom of this aren't maybe, uh, you know, as perfectly curved as I would like. So down here, there are a few different options. So you can use this smooth button and that will kind of help basically sand out these edges for you. So I usually recommend pressing it um, a few times just to kind of smooth it out, but keep in mind that the more times you press it, the less defined your shape gets. So you can over smooth it and then end up with a shape that doesn't necessarily look like your stitched piece. Okay, so I clicked it about 10 times, I think. This is pretty close to what my final piece would look like. I'm not too concerned about these little jagged, you know, very small jagged points because A, the Cricut um, isn't always as precise as to do those jagged points, but if any of them do come out a little bit jagged, typically what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of sandpaper and sand it down until it's the perfect shape. So then once you have the shape you want, which I'm pretty happy with this, You'll click next and you're gonna wanna click the cut. This would print out a picture of it and then cut, which is not super useful because we're just gonna be cutting a board. So we're gonna select cut and then name it whatever you want. So Okay. And then you're gonna go, come down here and click done. Okay. And so now you can see that it is saved as one of my images. So unfortunately you cannot cut a board from your Cricut. So what we'll have to do now is pull up the computer, but this will be in the saved shapes portion of my design space when I log in from my computer. And then you'll just select it and cut it out like you would any other shape. Okay, so for this method, um, typically what I do is I will take the photocopy of my piece and just kind of cut that out. So, um, I'm gonna do a loose cut to start. And then now I'm gonna go back through and kind of more formally cut out my shape. Okay, so once you've cut your shape out to satisfaction, which, um, you know, depending on who you are can take a bit of time. I know some people are very slow and detail oriented. Others like me just kind of cut with reckless abandon. So um, whatever, you know, works best for you, definitely go with that. But. Once you have your shape cut out, I typically take a darker piece like a cardboard or something along those lines, and then you'll just cut out your shape again using the paper that you just cut out as your template. Okay, so once you have your shape cut out using kind of a dark construction paper or something like that, I typically just put it against a piece of printer paper, and then I make my little um, tower for my iPad. 
So I'll just slip these little boxes in there. And we're going to do the same thing we did last time. So you're just going to want to take a photo of your piece. Okay, so we have that. And then now you're going to click use photo. Okay, and you'll start, you'll just want to erase kind of everything extra, especially if there's anything in the corner that's not paper. So like right in this corner, I had my little Krennic boxes, so I just went ahead and erased that. And you're just gonna do a loose outline this time. Um, you don't really need to use your Apple Pencil because we're not actually gonna get that close. And then now you can actually, because of the method we chose and the stark contrast between the shape and the paper, you can actually use this Remove button down here and then you just kind of select the areas you want to remove. And because it has that really high contrast, um, the Cricut Design Space is smart enough to figure out that, you know, you've got your piece here and you didn't want all this. And now typically what I'll do is just kind of look at this picture, use my eraser to clean it up a little bit if I've got any kind of like speckles or anything left behind. And then that looks pretty good. There are still a few speckles, but that's fine because we will clear that up on the next one. Okay, so you'll select next. And again, this is where you can go in and smooth it out like you did before. I would say, you know, a few taps just until you kind of get the general shape that you want. Um, just make sure you don't go too far because then you'll lose your shape overall. And then you can also use this despeckle tool to remove anything that might be kind of left around the edge. Okay, and then we're just gonna click next. Again, this is gonna be a cut and you'll just want to name it something. So, done save it and this will take you to all your images and it'll be saved there if you want to use it again in the future and again this is when you would go over to your computer um, pick this design that you've uploaded into your cloud and then you'll cut it out because unfortunately we cannot cut matte board from the ipad Okay, the third option, and this one is my least favorite just because I'm not very handy um, or good with a pen, is to take your scanned piece and you're just going to outline it with a Sharpie or something really thick and heavy. And then you will take another piece of paper, put it on top, and this one on top is going to be a blank sheet because um, for this one you kind of have this canvas poking through. So... For that reason, I do a simple outline using a pen, then a blank sheet of paper, and I will do another outline on here, making sure to fill it out all the way. So let's see. I have an example from earlier. So this is kind of what I got. And then now what you can do if you're using this method is kind of, you know, take the picture with your iPad, clean it up around and upload it. So it'd be very similar to the steps that we just used for this cutout. Um, but you know, if you have a preference for using pen and paper over scissors and construction paper, it is an option for you. 